Welcome to Jesus Changes Everything, a daily podcast dedicated to providing a fresh look at the ancient and glorious truth that Jesus not only reigns, but is busy about the business of bringing all things under subjection, that celebrates the wonder and the glory that he has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. It's time once again for another one of our sacred marriage segments. And uh, last time we came together, dear, uh, we talked about the fruit of the Spirit, specifically the first of the list, love. And you concluded that uh, segment just with a just a a grateful celebration of God's grace in our lives as husband and wife. And I just thought, even though it might be a couple of weeks between the segments, it was a great segue into uh, joy, this second fruit of the Spirit that we're going to consider today in marriage. And as we said last time, uh, this is not necessarily, there's not a separate kind of joy that's for marriage. There's joy, mm-hmm. and but joy does have a power in marriage that really makes a difference, and marriage has the capacity to give uh, joy. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I'm not sure where it was, but recently uh, I was reading or listening to something on marriage, and I heard someone say something like, uh, marital joy is the confidence that your spouse is for you. Mm. And I thought, well, that's fascinating because I've always said joy in general Mm -hmm. is the settled conviction that God is able and God is for you. Mm -hmm. His love for us is unwavering and uh, unbesmirched by sin. Ours has sin. But nevertheless, uh, joy, I, I think, is just very much grounded in uh, that confidence that can uh, keep us strong even in hard times, right? Joy is not the same thing as happiness. You can have joy and sorrow at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't be happy and sorrowful at the mm-hmm. same time. So <clears throat> what would you say? I mean, how? what are some of the things that we do that, in a sense, because we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit, this right. is a sort of uh, agricultural language. How do we cultivate joy, mm-hmm. uh, specifically in marriage? I'll, I'll start. I'll just say one thing that, that I know. I, I have, it, and it's. I promise you, it's not uh, become a ritual for me, but I have uh, a uh, habit where every night before I go to bed, uh, even after we've prayed together, uh, and then in the next morning, even before we've prayed together, in my own private prayers, every night before I go to sleep, and every morning when I wake up, I am thanking God for you. And that could be, you know, right after a terrible fight. Mm-hmm. I am still thanking God for you. I am praising God for you. I am, and I, I think that that's been a real helpful habit for me, but do you have any thoughts on on cultivating joy? I do. Um, Part of cultivating the spirit of joy is recognizing that it's not based on circumstances. Right. Happiness is circumstantial. And we have certainly had physical hardships, sickness, and those are not happy times. No. But we still have the joy of the Lord because he's our strength in Mm -hmm. the midst of that adversity. And the joy, that's the exchange, is that we have strength by the power of the Holy Spirit to worship and praise him in the midst of hardship. It's not based on whether you made a good paycheck this week or we got to have pizza on Friday night. It's not circumstantial. No, wait a minute. (laughs) Well, you know, pizza. That can bring joy, right? Yes. But it's not a tangible thing. So when you and I are cultivating a spirit of joy, it's because the Lord is bearing that fruit in us and we're yielding and saying, God, for every reason, we could just be angry and frustrated that we, but every one of our needs are met. Yes. We we have walked continually in that. So when I look at our marital joy, 
I look at you all the time and just tell you how beautiful you are to me. That is joy for me, even though it's circumstantial. I mean, we're going to change. We're going to age. So it's not based on anything other than the fact that I'm happy that God gave you to me. I could be bald one day. (laughs) Well... As I'm rubbing the top of his beautiful little head over here. (laughs) But it's not circumstantial. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not based on whether you have a car, a fine car, a fine clothes. Mm -hmm. And and it really determines the shallowness of our relationship as well. Right. Well, let me me speak into that because you... uh, did a good job of staying focused on the job at hand and not getting uh, distracted, not by my beauty, but by the silly grin that came on my face as I was listening to you. And I I just want to make sure that the uh, audience members heard this. Uh, Lisa, in describing the source of this joy, uh, very casually, without... uh, uh, calling attention to herself or you know, blowing a trumpet or even uh, citing where it comes from, which I couldn't do because I don't know where it comes from, but just works into the conversation the fact that the joy of the Lord is our strength. This is what I get to live with. This is the blessing that I have. This is the joy of my life that God has given me this wife who is so steeped in God's word and so cherishes God's word and so meditates on God's word that it just keeps coming out of her mouth in casual conversation. Uh, That's the kind of thing that we should be praying about Mm -hmm. Uh, in Thanksgiving. That's the kind of thing we should be praising God about, sweetheart. I mean, This was part of what drew me to you before we were married, the way you you did the same thing, the 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 way that your prayers were just so earnest and uh, honest and personal, um, and so I, I think in, in another thing that's vitally important uh, in terms of joy in a sacred marriage is the understanding that it's three of us mm-hmm. that. And this kind of goes back to that conversation we had about keeping score or about mm-hmm. who's getting what or, or uh, a conditional love. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, I wouldn't say this. This, is, this sounds kind of hard, but it's absolutely true and biblical. I don't want you, sweetheart, to lay down your life for me. I want you to lay down your life for Jesus. Mm-hmm. And I want to be with you when you do it. That's... It, it, it is well. I'll put it this way: I had a friend uh, who described uh, some mutual friends that we had their relationship, which was not very healthy. She said, "I won't give their names: Joey and Jill, or Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill." She said, "Are two ticks, no dog." Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, if you're a tick and you live by attaching yourself to something else and sucking its blood. You're a taker. You're not giving anything. And if you have two of those, they're just going to destroy each other Mm -hmm. because there's nothing, there's no host, if you will. Mm -hmm. And that can happen when when we look at our marital partner as the source of our joy, the source Mm -hmm. of our uh, meaning, the source of our our purpose. Yeah, as our Savior, exactly. Um, So it's just really critically important. Uh, one, that you not put that burden on the spouse, Mm -hmm. and two, that you and the spouse together are clinging to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, I I know, sweetheart, you've done a lot of uh, counseling uh, informally, uh, pseudo-formally, anywhere in between uh, with folks that have had some significant marital struggles. struggles. Would you say that that... That it's not uncommon, not only for people to look to their spouse as their savior, but then to get furious because they fail. Mm. That the fact that the spouse, yes, the they're spouse they're not fails. good enough to be the savior. Yes. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, that's that's common. Yeah, I, mean, I do it, think that again, it goes back to uh, it. It always baffles me when 
I meet people and they come into my presence and they want counseling and they're telling me how long they've been a pastor or a pastor's wife or they've been in a church, they've been involved with the church, but fundamentally they are so far from God and his word and obeying it that I'm baffled thinking, Mm -hmm. I don't know what all those accolades mean. Because at the end of the day, the only hope we have is in Christ. The only hope that we have in being changed and transformed is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. And if we don't know his word and what it tells us, we'll never be able to fundamentally even move forward because it's the word of God that's living and active and does not return void of what Isaiah tells us. Right. And when our spouse is, you're failing me, you're failing me, you're failing me, and Uh, I often hear both spouses blame while their own walk with God isn't growing is because you're not the head or you're not leading us in Bible study or you're not a woman who's doing what you're supposed to. And I don't know if it's just me getting older, (laughs) (laughs) but part of me always brings them back to the reminding that uh, their walk with God isn't contingent on whether the spouse is walking right. with God. Right. They're walking with God and have to stand before God alone. Absolutely. And, and in fact, their joy, even even so far as the New Testament gives its counsel to those who are married to unbelievers, right. uh, a couple of things. One, it doesn't mean you, you won't have any joy. Uh, it doesn't mean you don't have a Savior. It also doesn't mean that you don't have to fulfill your calling. Mm-hmm. That is, uh, you know, if a husband is a believer and he has a wife who's an unbeliever, he's still got a lover as Christ loves the church. Right. Christ loved us while we were yet sinners, mm-hmm. right? And if a wife has a husband who's not a believer and she's a believer, she's still supposed to honor him. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. so much of thinking, well, now now that I know that he's such a terrible person, I can really start haranguing him. That's not it at all. But, you know, the different steer between a healthy marriage and a marriage that is in crisis continually and two people refuse to get in and roll up their sleeves and fix their marriage is whether or not both are committed to Christ. Yes. That's made the difference in our marriage. Amen. Every hardship that we've had, every illness that we've had, job loss, DUI, every situation both of us could be in our natural flesh. I hate you for what you did to me. I hate that shame. I hate I hate that failure. We've never done that. No. It has always been, Lord, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. And let's just hold on to God. We're trusting him. And it's not a, why are you doing this? Right. It's, we, we, this wasn't the plan that you and I had. Right. But God has a different plan. And although all hell can break loose in a marriage... You're responsible for both of you going to the feet of the cross, both of you on your knees crying out, because God is the restorer of, of broken marriages, and he will renew that joy. And it isn't circumstances. You know, in every one of our hardships, we still had joy. Yes. It didn't mean you're right. We we had sorrow. We had loss. We had frustration. Mm-hmm. We had anger. Yeah. We had uh, anger. <laughs> you <laughs> think- know, just... Anger. There was anger, if I recall, <laughs> yeah. right? So, you know, that anger. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and again, that is our two flesh. You know, mm-hmm. we yep. both are responding to something that God ordained for us to work through together. Yeah. And well, you remember, sweetheart, I've been telling you for a long time that marriage is two sinners who love each other. Mm-hmm. And the devil is always there, not only to accuse us of our own sin. But to use my sin to convince you that I don't love you, or to use your sin to convince me that you don't love me. And that's why you got to remember both of those things. We're, we're not perfect, and we are going to have hardships, and we're going to have uh, challenges and difficulties, and we're not young like we once were. But we are. We what are was better. that word? We are better. And what was the word you used? If the joy of the Lord renews us. Mm-hmm remakes us. And so maybe that's another way to say, not only are we old newlyweds, we're young newlyweds. Well, and we're remade. Yes. Amen. Well, sweetheart, as I said at the end of the last time, you are my joy. And I love you with all my heart. And I look forward to having you back on again. I love you. (laughs) 
You've been listening to the Jesus Changes Everything podcast, a production of Dunamis Fellowship, the teaching outreach of Dr. R.C. Sproul Jr. If you've enjoyed this podcast, we encourage you to subscribe, which you can do at all the usual outlets, to tell your friends, and to spread the word. To learn more about the work of Dunamis Fellowship, please visit rcsproljr.com and join us next time on Jesus Changes Everything.